Welcome to Christian Faith Ministries, where Drs. Greg and Deidre Thomas are the pastors. As we embrace the future together with so many uncertainties, we are here to help you survive and thrive during this pandemic and beyond. Join us today as we declare war on poverty and sickness. Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Thomas, and I want to welcome you, praise God, to Wednesday Bible Study. We're so excited about what God is doing, that Wednesday Bible Study is not just Wednesday night Bible study. You know, I've had a lot of people, praise God, from around the world that, that they're on a different schedule. You know, parts of Africa, you know, it's, it's when we're at 11 o'clock, you know, they're almost at the end of their day, you know, and... Many of them said, Dr. Greg, you know, I would join you if you were coming on at a different time. And I would say, well, you can always go to YouTube and get the messages. Praise God. But glory to God, Bible study, amen. We're just going to do it all day, all day Bible study. You have access to it. And so no matter where you are or what time of day you're available, whether it's on your lunch hour or whether it's early in the morning, praise God that we're going to post uh, the, uh, uh, give you access amen, to the uh, Wednesday Bible study, amen, where it's there uh, throughout the entire day. You say, well, Dr. Gray, what time will it be available? Well, our goal is to make sure that at 12 a.m. Central Standard Time or 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, East, Eastern <laughs> Times, Eastern Standard, Eastern Time, amen, glory to God that uh, it will be available, amen, so that you're able to access it when you, you desire. Now, let's get into the word. On, when, on Sunday, you know, I started the teaching on fill my cup, and uh, praise God, yeah, 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 I, I left. I'm so excited about this message, and already, you know, I pre see from some of your, your comments and some of your called and, and, and sharing how you've been blessed by it, amen, that I know that it's, it's an on-time message, and that blesses me. You know, I told you last week, amen, on Sunday, that not taking the time to fill your cup back up, it only serves to put you in harm's way. And, 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 and that can happen in more ways than one. And so I want to I wanna make sure you understand that there's some things that happens to you that when you don't fill your cup. And so I said to you last time that an empty cup can cause untold problems in, in your life. Uh, ultimately, not taking the time to stop and refuel it, it, it can stress you out. It can cause you to have a burnout. Are you with me? Now, you, spiritually, our relationship with our Savior, uh, it, it will suffer. Our prayer life and the devotion life will suffer. Physically, the stress causes us to feel aches and pains. I told you last week that, praise God, that you begin to have the Ida's family. You say, well, Dr. Greg, who's the Ida's family? The birth, Bertha or birth Ida's? Uh, arthritis, author, you know, they just come to visit you. They invade your body, you know, in your hip joints, in your knees, in your, and have you think you need a knee replacement, a hip replacement. I'm not saying that some of you don't, but I'm telling you, sometimes you just need to get rid of the stress and you need to, praise God, you're serving, you're trying to do for others with an empty cup because you've, you've already given everything you got and you're depleted. It can cause, you know, headaches and and, and high blood pressure, stomach ulcers, not taking the time to stop and refuel, it makes us stressed out and, as I said, even burnout. Emotionally, we experience greater rates of depression and anxiety, anger and worry. We become easily irritated and overwhelmed mentally. Also, our social life can suffer. <clears throat> our spouses, our kids, our friends, our dogs, our family, our cats, our coworkers make become more frustrating to us as our fuses become shorter and shorter. So what can we do to solve off these side effects? I started telling you last week, praise God, uh, some of the things that you can do to get your cup filled up again. Number one, Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, come unto me or call unto me and I will answer thee and show you great and mighty things that thou is not, does not know. What he says, I want to give you a greater revelation when you get to know who I am. See, if you don't know what to do, just ask God. You know, make time, here's number four, make time to take some time to pray. And I love to say, not just take some time to pray, but make some time to pray. Take a long pause to spend time in the presence of the Lord in prayer. Read his love letters, what I call the Bible, 
and, and, and whisper your heart's request to him. When, when, when we connect with God and reflect on his goodness and what he has already done for you in the past, holla, you can't help but get excited. His promises of what he will do in the future, our spirits become refreshed on a regular basis and our cups will begin to run over. <clears throat> David said it like this. He said, it will cause in Psalms 23 and 5, my cup will run over. Hallelujah. Because his goodness and his mercy follows me all the days of my life as he's restoring my soul. Hallelujah. Psalms 119, 105 says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I want you to make time or take time to, to read the Bible. Glory to God, meditate on it. Be intentional in comprehending God's word. See, when you spend time in the word of God, the, you're spending time with God. So the Bible says, in the beginning was the word, right? And the word was with God, right? And the word was God. So when you spend time in the word, you're spending time with him. Strengthen yourself in the Lord intentionally. Oh my God. So what are you saying, Dr. Greg? Uh, the one way, praise God. I love what uh, Philippians 4.13 says that I can do what? All things through Christ who gives me the strength. You need Christ. You need to spend time in his presence. Oh my God, listen to praise and worship music. It can change your whole mood. Uh, it can change the atmosphere. Glory to God. I want you to learn how to just have fun. This is where we left off last week. See, some of you don't even know how to have fun. You even come to church, look like you've been baptized in lemon juice, drinking prune juice all night long. Got a prune juice hangover. <laughs> you need to get, I need to say this to somebody right now. You you need to just go to sleep. Look at you. You got the bags under your eyes and everything. You need to just take some time and rest. You say, well, Dr. Greg, I can't sleep. Oh, praise God. That's why you got, praise God, you can go get some sleep aid. I mean, natural stuff, melatonin. I mean, all kinds of stuff. You can sleep in tea and all kinds of ways. That's not an excuse, but find that way to rest. I, I'm so high pumped all the time. Praise God. Yeah, I mean, I just turned 70. I'll be 71 this year. And I got more energy. God has renewed me like a wild ox. And I got all this energy. Praise God. And I drink sleepy tea. And instead of it's put me to sleep, it gives me more energy. I drink, if I drink any green tea with caffeine in it, praise God, it takes me over to top. <laughs> praise God. Even my Rafa product, praise God, that's going to be coming out soon. I take that. If I take that too late in the evening, I'm charged up all night. God can't even sleep. See, my wife, man, I could put her in a contest, and she'll beat you sleeping every time I win the, the sleeping contest. That's just the way she's shaped. But I said, baby, you need to lay hands on me so that I can get some of that. But see, see you may be the same way. It's hard. Look, Proverbs, praise God, but you got to take time to sleep. You got to eat right. Are you with me? You got to go out, go for a walk. You may not do 20,000 steps like me or 10,000 steps. Start with three. Start with one thousand steps. Hallelujah. Be surprised what it will do and it will motivate you. Proverbs 3, 24 through 26 says, when thou lie it down, thou shalt not be afraid. That means you're not going to have no stress when you go to bed. Yea, thou shalt lie down and thy sleep shall be sweet. Hallelujah. Come on. That's the scripture you need for your rest. Take time for yourself. Write this down. And don't feel guilty about taking time for yourself. Some of you get stressed out just because you've taken time for yourself. Glory to God. I love it when my wife get in the car, her car, that she allows me to drive in this season. Amen. When she get in the car and she just go. I like to know where she, I don't need to know where she's going. I just know, like to know, praise God, you know, that she's having fun and that she's able to do that. Hallelujah. Amen. And you need to do that. You need to take some time for yourself. Oh, my God. I need to say that for someone again. Take some time for yourself. Without the husband, yes. Without the children, yes. Yes. Women, you need to go shopping. <laughs> oh, my God. My brother said, oh, Pastor, why did you say that? Well, brothers, you need to probably go shopping, too. You've been wearing that same pair of jeans, man. They're bell bottoms, so that tells you how long you've been wearing them. <laughs> you need to change them. They're doing the straight leg jeans now. Amen. You need to get with the style, my brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Take some time for yourself and don't feel guilty. Both 
a fully God and fully man, Jesus regularly practiced at the discipline of self-care. What did he do? He knew the importance of removing himself from his mission, his work, his purpose, and his people so he could fill his cup with living waters. Get a greater revelation of who Jesus is in your life. And if you don't know him, ask him and he'll fill you with his presence. John 4.10 says, Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, ah, hallelujah, and he would have given you living waters. Hallelujah. So in other words, praise God, when you get a greater revelation of who Jesus is in you, praise your whole life is getting ready to change. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, ah, and I will give you the rest you need. When you have nothing left to give, you are uh, uh, get to, to give, or you depending on God to do the pouring, or are you depending on man, a sugar daddy, a sugar mama, drugs, alcohol, or some other enablement because of your low self-worth of yourself. When you feel like you just can't go on, trust God minute by minute, day by day. He has been faithful to get you through every bad situation, every bad day. He's always been there for you. Have some faith. Hallelujah. When you have nothing left to give, are you depending on God to do the pouring? I'm here to tell you when you depend on God to pour into you, he will do it. Be sure to set aside time every day throughout the day to let the Lord love on you. Hallelujah. Praise God. He does love you. Praise God. Whether somebody else told you, he does not. I come to tell you, he does take time to remember that and be encouraged in that he loves you. Come on, sit right now. God loves me. Oh, my goodness. Come on, say it again. God loves me. Glory to God. Say it again. God loves me. Pray God that whatever I need, God's got me. God will take care of me. Hallelujah. And then praise God. You got to slow down to just look up. Smell, praise God, uh, the atmosphere. Take a deep breath sometimes. Some of you just get so worked up, my God, that you just don't spend time with him. See, every human on this earth has the need to feel love. While we have varying levels of it, uh, but, but we need it. We need it, we praise God, especially, praise God, if we are like empty cups needing to be filled. So if you're not allowing God to fill you your, your cup, then our human nature will want to fill it in other ways. Are you listening to me? I'll say it again. If you're not allowing God to fill your cup, then you're going to, praise God, you're going to be looking for other things uh, to, to, to fill you up. And in and, 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 and ways, praise God, that we become dependent upon and, and, and when we make other people pray, become enablers of, of what you do for them. And then when you stop doing it for them, they have no use for you. And so you might as well get yourself, praise God, in line and begin to say, God, you know, I can't do any of this. I don't mind doing what I do, God, but I know, praise God, the most important thing is what I do, oh God, in serving you, oh God. And so, God, I need you. I need your presence. I need your wisdom. I need your direction. Fill me up, Lord. Glory to God to the overflow. I always tell, praise God, people that I'm coaching, Praise God that unless, praise God, your cup, if you don't take time to fill your cup first, then praise God, you'll be not, you'll not have the ability to be a blessing to anybody else. Are you with me? And, and, and so therefore, you know, you're going to have to make sure, praise God, that you take time for yourself. See, so if you don't, I'll say this again, that, that our human nature, praise God, is praise God, to, to desire to have the cup full. But if you don't fill it with him, you're going to be looking for other things such as food, friends, sex, alcohol, career accomplishments, and, you, and the list goes on and on and on. But anything aside from the God's uh, love, aside from God's love, will come up short every time. Every human being on this earth has a need to feel love. As Christians, God has called us to, to something great. And that something great is pure dependence on him. Are you with me? Oh, my God. Are we, uh, are, are we all 
supposed to look and act the same? No, you know, we're not cookie cutters, you know. I, 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 we are called to be like Christ, glory to God. And you, that's the personal relationship. It's you personal. It's the way he, he, he takes you the way you are. Glory to God. And he just infused himself into you. Glory to God. Where he comes to live in you. So you have a different filtering. And where you, you, can, be, you can hear him. And you can be directed by him. And you can make the choices that, that are different from the world. And the things you used to do. So as you go about your life. Keeping busy. And juggling the responsibility of work, church, and family, will your cup uh, spill? Yep, yep, it probably will. Just like I shared with you mine, it, 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 it happened. But the most important question to ask, will you allow God to help you fill it back up again? Now, I pray that you will and that today's teaching has helped you. And I want to leave you with the words of this song as I bring it to a close. And, and the words are real simple. You know, the song is called Fill My Cup, Lord. And it goes like this. Like the woman at the well, I was seeking for things that could not satisfy. And when I heard my Savior speaking, draw from my well that never run dry. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. There are millions in this world who are seeking for pleasures earthly good afford. But none can match the wondrous treasure that I find in Jesus Christ, my Lord. So my brother, if the things that this world gives you leaves hunger that won't pass away, my blessed Lord will come and save you if you kneel to him and humbly pray. So come and quench this thirsting of my soul. I lift it up, Lord. Fill my cup, come and quench this thirsting of my soul, this thirsting of my mind, my will, my intellect, and my emotions. Fill my cup, bread of heaven. Feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Fill it up and make me whole. Oh my God, I pray that you've been blessed by today's teaching. I pray that you take some time, glory to God, to get in the presence of God. I want you to know, praise God, he loves you. He cares about you. And no matter what others have said, praise God, I want you to know that God is there for you. I know that you're listening to me right now, that somebody, you know, I see the tears in your eyes. I, I know, praise God, I, I feel what you've gone through. And I sense, praise God, the Holy Spirit saying to me to say to you that right now, praise God, that you you just need to let that go. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he, he hurt you. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I see you, my brother. You, yeah, she did hurt. It did hurt. You know, she... Uh, she betrayed you. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. Yeah. I see you right now. You know, somebody is struggling because you're, it seems like you, your children don't even care about you. They won't even pick up the phone to call you. And you wonder who are, who are these kids that I raised and you gave them all of you. And now you're, you're, you're at home and you're sick and you got different things going on and they don't even know what you're going through. I want you to know that God sees you. God's got you. God's going to touch that child once again, and he's going to cause that child to get back in touch with you. I'm telling you, he's going to restore the relationship. I see you right now, this person right now. I, oh, my God, someone, I just see you with this ugly sore. You know, it's cancerous, and it's been diagnosed, and, you know, it's like in this second and going to a third stage cancer, and the doctor said that it can't, it's nothing they can do. Well, that's nothing new, but I come to tell you right now, Dr. Jesus, right now, just put your hands on the uh, the, the phone or the laptop or the TV, whatever you're doing, and praise God and just say, God, I believe. I mean, I know you're able to heal me, and, and I want you to know God's going to do it right now. Amen. God's going to heal you. Praise God. Somebody's been going through some sickness, 
praise God, and, and that sickness, glory to God, is really, really affecting you, it, and you can't hardly walk, you know, and you jerk, so I want you to forgive. Uh, it, it's because you haven't forgiven, you know, the failed marriage, and you need to forgive. Amen? You need to forgive. You need to forgive. You need to forgive. Somebody, you know, you lost your business, and then it was because of something that somebody that was in business with you did to you, and it hurt. And, and, and you haven't been able to forgive yourself. It's time to let it go. You know, do you realize that, praise God, I want you to go back and listen to Sunday's message. I told about forgiveness being a, a blessing blocker. You know, come on, you got to let it go. You can't live your life like this. You got to let it go. I want you to know God is still God. God is still healing. God is still delivering. God is still who he is. And he's going to do what he said he's going to do. Amen. I pray you've been blessed by today's teaching. It didn't keep you long tonight, but I pray you got something out of it. Go back and listen to part one of this message. Listen to this section and continue to let God speak to you. Oh, my God. Write down what he is telling you and do it. Amen. This is Dr. Greg Thomas signing off once again, letting you know that God loves you and so do I. You've been listening to Christian Faith Ministries broadcast, where Drs. Greg and Deidre Thomas are the pastors. If you've been blessed and desire to give, you need prayer, or simply want more information about upcoming events or training, go to cfmnola.org. Welcome to the IMLACA Basic Boot Camp. You may be asking the question, what does IMLACA stand for? IMLACA is the abbreviation for International Marketplace Leaders and Chaplaincy Academy. The purpose of launching IMLACA is because the world as we've known it is changing rapidly daily. When the coronavirus pandemic hit in 2019, the entire world shifted from an industrial way of doing things in the marketplace to a digital way. However, one thing that has not changed and will never change is people are suffering and the need for marketplace ministry leaders in business, government, and the church that are equipped, trained, and released as ordained men and women of God as chaplains around the world. This academy was created with you in mind. Yes, you. You've always wanted to be used by God, to be a servant leader in the marketplace, to pray for the sick, perform weddings, christenings, officiate over funerals, and much more. I believe our God has handpicked you for the IMLACA. This course is online, open book, self-paced, self-study, and self-test. Upon completion, you will participate and receive the following. One. Certificate of Completion. Two, you'll participate in an online or in-person ordination and graduation ceremony. By that time, you'll receive your ordination and graduation certificates, signet ring, chaplaincy badge, and lapel pin, digitally or by express mail.